Peckington Players present Mother Goose, a pantomime for radio by Kai Bailey. Part 2. dark in these woods. That thick canopy above hardly lets any light through. How's your wrist, Fairy Collie Wobbles? Yeah. I think I've sprained it. I told you to be careful. You told her to be careful of the branch. I meant to say root. It's an easy mistake to make. I shouldn't really be out in this cold air anyway. You know, it's not good for my sciatica. Why can't you just use magic to make yourself better? Oh, it's forbidden. Fairies can't use magic on themselves. Hmm. Looking at this map, I think we're lost. Tulip, look at the compass. It's ten minutes fast. Oh, I don't like it here. It's too scary. Don't be scared, Marigold. I'll protect you. Well, you protect me too. I'm frightened out of my wits. Well, that wouldn't take long. Come on, come on, come on, everybody. We need to get a move on if we're going to catch up with Mother Goose and Priscilla. I'm shattered. If I'd known it was going to take this long, I'd have packed a couple of sarnies and a thermos. Not much further. We'll soon be there. This place is really creepy. There's nothing to be scared of. Are you frightened, Priscilla? <coughs> You're braver than me, then. I want to go. I feel sick with nerves. Pull yourself together. We're going to die! Oh, think positive, woman! <sighs> We're going to die quickly. Calm down. But what about all the ghosts and ghouls? Well, they won't hurt you. I can control them. I have ultimate power over the creatures of the night. Besides, we're almost there. I can feel it. Behold. Oh, oh my goodness. This must be the call of eternal youth and beauty. It's so magnificent. <laughs> Why do you think we should leave? This is what we've been looking for. Mother Goose, you found your prize. Isn't it wonderful? I've never seen anything so beautiful in my life. That's what you'll be saying the next time you look in a mirror. What do I do? Tell me what I need to do. First, we must summon the spirit of the pool. How do we do that? Well, stand back, and I'll show you. Spirit of reflections of water's deep. Hear my voice in the ripples of sleep. Wake and rise to perform your duty. Bring your magic of youth and be away. Uh, 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 who is it that stirs me from my watery slumber? Oh, unworldly spirit. It was I, the demon kin. My humble apologies for disturbing your dreams. But I have someone with me who craves an audience. Who have you brought to see me? A woman called Mother Goose. Step forward, Mother Goose. What do you desire? I want to be young and beautiful again. I have it within my power to grant such wishes. Walk into the waterfall and sink beneath the surface of the pool. But I shall catch my death. There's an awful nip in the air. Don't you want your dreams to come true? I'm too nervous. What if it goes wrong? I think how your life is going to change. Trust me. But I haven't got my armbands. Well, everyone will think you're beautiful. A squire will fall in love with you. Take my hand, Mother Goose. Walk with me into the pool. OK, here goes. At last, I've done it. I defeated the virtuous Mother Goose. Quick, fairy collywobbles. This way, Marigold. Hurry up, Tulip. You're too late, you pathetic fairy. I've won. <laughs> I've won. Where's Mum? What have you done with her, you fiend? Nothing. You better tell me, or I'll punch you on the nose. I promise you, I haven't done anything with Mother Goose. She did it all by herself. But where is she? 
She's in the pool of eternal youth and beauty. Oh no! She can't swim! She's perfectly safe. Very soon she'll emerge from the waters feeling and looking like a new woman. But we don't want our mum to be a new woman. We were quite happy with the one we had. Much as I love to say in chit I really do have better things to do than waste my time with such a tedious bunch of losers. So, if you don't mind, I'll take my remittance and be on my way. Look, I've got a handy chain with me to put around the goose's neck. <laughs> what are you doing? Taking what's rightfully mine. But Priscilla is our goose. She belongs to us. She's part of our family oh. now. Sorry to be a party pooper, but I'm afraid I made a deal with your beloved mother. She got a dip in the pool in exchange for me getting the magic bird as my slave. She would never give up her friend knowingly. Okay, I admit I was a bit vague. Maybe I did make it absolutely clear what she'd have to give me in return for her newfound youth from beauty. Now, come on, bird brain. Leave her alone! Fairy collie wobbles, can't she do anything? I'm afraid not. Lord Millicent has made a magical deal with Mother Goose, which, which can't be broken. But don't worry, Priscilla. I'll think of a way to save you soon. Whatever. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. <laughs> oh, what are we going to do? This is terrible. I'll go and sort him out. Oh, there's no point. He's a magical being. You'll never defeat him. Look, it's Mother Goose. She's stepping out of the pool. Hello, everyone. I'm back, and don't I look gorgeous? Hello, dear. You look very pleased with yourself. Yes, I am, as it happens. I've just bought myself a new dress for the May Fair. Look in my basket. Do you know, I went to the jumble sale, but I missed that one. Look, there's Malcolm Powder the Bailiff. Doesn't he look dashy in his Morris dancing costume? He reminds me of one of my ex-boyfriends. Oh, really? Which one? Well, you don't expect me to remember his name, do you? I haven't seen him for a fortnight. Hello, ladies. Hello, Malcolm. We were just admiring your ball tricks. Why, thank you. They're smart, aren't they? Oh, look, it's Mavis Doily and Bert Toast. I don't believe it. Oh, I don't believe it. What's up, Miss Doily? You're in it, is was. I've got something important to tell you. It's Mother Goose. Bert and I have just seen her, haven't we, Bert? We have. We've just seen her with our very own eyes. And she's changed. What's so amazing about that? Mother Goose is always getting changed. Oh, not her clothes. Her face. Her body. She's young. And beautiful. Hello, dears. I don't believe it. I thought you'd be surprised. Gloria. What's happened? Well, Mavis, it's as simple as that blouse you're wearing. I'm a new woman. I knew you wouldn't be able to resist a spot of surgery when you came into money. Why, I do believe, Mrs Chuckley, you are the teensiest bit jealous. And as a matter of fact, this didn't cost me a penny. Guess what I've just heard about Mother Goose? Ah, Miss Proper, we weren't expecting you. You usually send your flying monkeys first. Oh, hello, Gloria. I didn't realise you were there. Obviously. Was there something you wanted to share with us? It was just something a little bird told me. Oh, yes. I'd forgotten you were a part-time scarecrow. Who rattled your cage? Who opened yours? Have you told them yet, Marjorie? Whoops! I'm afraid I beat her to it. Sorry to spoil your fun. I know how you like a good gossip. I don't know what you mean. Last month, your mouth was open so often, you had to have your tonsils lagged. Well, at least I'm not sad enough to resort to cosmetic surgery in a desperate attempt to keep my looks. What do you mean, keep them? She never had any to begin with. Now, now, ladies, let's be rational about this. Oh, stop sitting on the fence, Hilda. You're pathetic. Uh, shall we all try and calm down, please? 
Oh, Mavis, get a backbone. It's about time these two busybodies were brought down a peg or two. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got better things to do than to spend time with a bunch of misfits like you. Good day. Cor, Mother Goose is pretty hot these days. Ladies, I think we need an emergency committee meeting. To the village hall at once. So, Bert, I see you've got your Morris dancing outfit on. Are you ready for your first practice? I'm not sure about this, Malcolm. I can't dance, and I've got two left feet. Bert, don't worry. You'll soon get the hang of it, and at least it gets you out the house and away from your wife for an hour or so. She wasn't happy with me coming out. Without her, I take my missus everywhere. I take mine everywhere, too. Trouble is, she keeps finding her way back. I like spending time with the missus. I'm a very lucky man. She's a sort of woman that men whistle at. You mean she looks like a sheepdog? No. I mean, I married Miss Wright. So did I. Unfortunately, I didn't realise her first name was always. Here's Squire Skinflint. He's our foreman. That means he teaches us dances. Ah, hello, Malcolm. Hello, sir. I brought Bert along today because he's interested in joining us. Ha, <laughs> splendid, splendid. It'll be very useful when we hunt the squirrel. Oh, oh I don't like the sound of that, sir. I hear they have a nasty bite. It's the name of a dance, you fool. Hello, Dad. Hello, everyone. Ah, uh, there you are, Colin. I see you've got the professor with you. Hello, chaps. <laughs> we'll get straight on with the rehearsal because it needs to be perfect for the May Fair. We'll start with shaving the donkey. Stop! What is going on? What are you doing, Bert? I slipped over. And what? My bells. Oh, I beg your pardon. His bells have dropped off. Oh, poor fellow. No, uh, this is useless. We'll never be ready for the Mayfair. Our only hope is if Mother Goose performs before us and she scares everyone off. I oh, wouldn't rely on it. Mother Goose is a different woman. She's had a makeover. Big deal. She slapped it on with a trowel and had a perm. That's what you think. Mother Goose. Hello, Squire Skinflint. <laughs> Gloria, you used that heavy-duty face cream I invented after all. No, I didn't, you doddering old dimwit. It wouldn't have worked anyway. None of your inventions ever do. <laughs> what about my self-twirling spaghetti fork? Oh, yes, that was fine. Until it failed to stop twirling in my mouth and my tongue got wrapped around it. Just face it, Professor. You're a failure. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, I'll be on my way then. Cheerio, chaps. Gloria Goose, you're looking very delectable these days. I've always said you're the best-looking lady in Pop Hill Struggle. <laughs> Mr Powder, you'll make me blush. How about a little kiss? What about your wife? You'll never find out. I wouldn't bet on it. She found out about you and Mary from the dairy when I bumped into her in the village square just now. What? Oh, heck, I'm watching me neck in it. i better go and find her. Don't worry, Malcolm. I'll come with you. You, you might need a bodyguard. Well, 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 Squire Skinflint, you've been a widower for ten years now, so how am I going to get rid of you? <laughs> Why would you want to get rid of me? I thought you had a soft spot for me. <laughs> but I thought you weren't interested in me. You said some very mean things to me. <laughs> I was just playing with you. It didn't sound like that to me. You were very adamant. Well, I've had a change of heart. I'm surprised you needed to. Your old one was hardly ever used. Let me take you out for a little drinky tonight. I'd rather go out for a drink with a dead haddock. What? I could get anyone I want now looking like this. So get knotted. I wouldn't touch you with a maypole. How dare you? I'm not standing around here listening to this. Clear off, then. Well, don't worry, I'm going. What's happened to you, Mother Goose? I bet you didn't think I had it in me. You've changed. I know. Aren't I stunning? I mean, your personality, that's changed too. You used to be so lovely. I was just standing up for myself. Your father has been very horrible to me in the past. You never used to lower yourself to his level. You were always better than him, and you were so vile to Professor Whimsy. 
If you've got nothing nice to say, why don't you get lost too? Hey, Mum. Hi, Mum. What's happened between you and Professor Whimsy? We've just seen him and he seems terribly hurt about something you've said. And I saw Miss Doyley. You've really upset her and Mrs Bunting. Oh, I haven't got time to explain. I've got to go and buy myself a new dress to wear at the beauty contest. Your mum has changed. Oh, do be quiet. It's got nothing to do with you. Mum, you'll upset Colin next. Do I look bothered? No, you don't. And that's the point. You may be young and beautiful now, but you've turned ugly on the inside. Have you given one thought to Priscilla the Goose since you stepped out of that pool? She was your friend and you betrayed her. Oh, oh my goodness. You're right. You're so right. What's happened to me? I've become vain and selfish. I've been horrible to all my dear friends, especially Priscilla. What have I done? I'd do anything to bring her back. That's easier said than done. The Demon King took her away. I can't believe he tricked me. He told me he was my conscience. Maybe Fairy Collywobbles can help us. Yes, of course. Where is she when you need her? I'm here, Mother Goose, but I fear I have some bad news for you all. Priscilla has escaped from the Demon King. Well, that's awesome news. I haven't finished yet. Priscilla has flown off into the clouds to take refuge back in Ganderland. Oh, oh no. I'll never see her again. Oh, is there nothing we can do, Fairy Collywobbles? Not unless you've got an aeroplane. We haven't, but I know a man who has. You're not going to believe this. I was talking to Professor Whimsy before Morris dancing today, and he was telling me about something very special he just finished making. You mean to say? Yes, he's invented a flying machine. Isn't it convenient that we live next door to an inventor? What would we have done without him, listeners? Um, Aladdin? Professor Whimsy! Yes, Mother Goose, you call. Professor, I am so sorry for the way I spoke to you earlier. Please forgive me. You are a very dear person, and I'd hate to lose you as a friend. <laughs> oh, well, apology accepted. Good. Now, can they borrow your flying machine? They need to travel to Ganderland, far above us in the clouds. Hello, Tulip. I thought you were going on a little trip with your mother to find your pet goose. Hello, Mrs Bunting. Hello, ladies. I had to stay behind just in case Priscilla came back to the cottage while they were away. Oh, well, don't get too down about it, my dear. They'll be back sooner than you think. Oh, it's not that, Miss Doyley. It's Colin. Oh, what about him? I'm invisible to him. Oh, there, there, dear. Don't upset yourself. He's not worth it. No man is. Hello, ladies. Hello, Mrs Chutney. Where are you going with that big basket of sweets and chocolates? Oh, it's just something for my new boyfriend. He likes to have a little treat in the evening. I won't be having any, of course. Of course, dear. What's the matter, Tulip? Oh, she's upset about Colin. She's got a bit of a soft spot for him. Every time I try to tell him how I feel, he doesn't listen. He only ever seems to take any notice of marigolds. Mrs Chutney, can't you give Julep some advice on how to chat up a man? The way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So what should Tulip do? What do you think she should say to Colin? How would you put it, Mrs Chutney? Well, let's see if my basket of goodies can help me out. Right, first of all, you need to take some time out to sit and talk to him. Maybe one evening after eight or on a picnic, or even sat on a double-decker bus. Oh, yes. Then you can whisper sweet nothings in his ear. You can tell him he's your little poppet or jelly baby. And that he makes your heart ripple, your head twirl, and your stomach go all curly wurly That sort of talk is bounty wall that whip him into a frenzy. But don't flake out 
or get your Snickers in a Twix when he tells you he's fruit and nuts about you too. Oh, stop Maltesing. Colin doesn't fancy me. Don't be a chomp. I'm not lying when I say he'll revel in your affections. But why does he always seem to avoid the topic? When it comes to the crunchy, you've got to make the first move. Be a smarty and declare your undying love for him or you'll drift her apart. Your words will hit him wham straight in the love heart. You'll make him feel lighter than arrow and as if he could take flight into space. Past Mars, through the Milky Way and into other galaxies beyond. <laughs> then he'll take you for a breakaway. You'll tic-tac through the two lips. He'll tell you that you rock his world. <laughs> and that you're his little tutti fruity. Oh, thank you, ladies. You've given me a real boost. I'm going to do it. Next time we're alone, I'm going to tell Colin how I feel. See you later. I hope she doesn't end up with cream egg on her face. Welcome to Gunderland, strangers. Wow, where are we? This place is amazing. We must be in Elton John's bathroom. This is the palace of King Goosequill. <laughs> and might we inquire who you are? My name is Goose Pimple, chief servant in the king's household. Oh, so you're the one we need to talk to. Listen, mate, could you see if you can wangle an audience with his majesty I first? beg your pardon? We want to talk to the king. His majesty will be with you shortly. Please make yourself comfortable. Any chance of a cuppa? <laughs> Present His Most Regal Majesty, King Goosequill, Governor of Gandaland, Chairman of the Poultry Council, and a Senator for the Congress of Waterfowl Diplomacy. Kneel before His Majesty. In this dress, you must be joking. Kneel! Oh, if you insist. You all may rise. Oh, for goodness sake, was that really worth it? Who is it that seeks an audience with me today? Uh, excuse me, Your Majesty, it's us. Come forward. Yes, Your Majesty. Speak. My name is Colin, Your Majesty, and we've travelled here in Professor Whimsy's new flying machine. We're on a mission to save our friend. Do you have a licence to fly in our airspace? Oh, I'm afraid not, Your Majesty. I didn't realise we needed one. Ignorance is no excuse for breaking laws. The minimum penalty for flying in our airspace without permission is a term of 10 years hard labor. Take him away and secure him in our cells while he awaits trial. What? No, stop. You can't do that. Leave him alone, you big bully. Please have mercy, your majesticals. It isn't his fault, it's mine. I'm the one to blame. These good people were just helping me find my goose, Priscilla. Priscilla? Priscilla the Goose, I remember her. I gave her as a gift to a good and virtuous friend of mine in recognition of her kindness and warm heart. That'll be Fairy Collywobbles. Yes, have you met her? Of course, that's who I got Priscilla from. So, you stole her? No, she gave her to me as a gift. Why should I believe you? <laughs> because she's telling the truth. It's quite obvious these are just a bunch of reprobates. Arrest them! Fairy Collywobbles, you took your time. Yeah, but I had a doctor's appointment. Yeah. What an absolute pleasure it is to see you again, Miss Collywobbles. Well, hello, Your Majesty. It's been too long. How's your old trouble? Oh, no better, I'm afraid. I'm still taking the tablets. Uh, in case you failed to notice, we're about to be thrown in prison. Oh, yes. Terribly sorry. That's why I'm here. I sensed you were in a bit of a fix, so I thought I'd better pop along. <laughs> he doesn't believe that you gave Priscilla to me as a gift. Oh, Your Majesty, she's speaking the truth. I rewarded Mother Goose for her goodness and virtue, just as you had rewarded me. So, where is Priscilla now? What brings everyone to Gandalan? Oh, Mother Goose was tricked by a wicked demon called Malignum. 
He pretended to be her conscience and eventually managed to exploit her vanity. She traded her friendship with Priscilla for eternal youth and beauty. The demon made Priscilla his slave, but she managed to escape from the demon's evil clutches and headed straight back here. Goose Pimple, find Priscilla and bring her here. At once, King Goose Quill. So, you're vain, are you, Mother Goose? Not a very nice trait in a person. Fairy Collywoddles, I thought you said you rewarded her for her goodness. No, but she only just, she just made a mistake, which she bitterly regrets now. It was a moment of weakness. I was at my lowest ebb. I want her back now. You do realize that you will lose your youth and beauty if you get her back. I don't care. Your majesticals, give her back to me. That is not for me to decide. The decision has to lie with Priscilla. May I present Priscilla the Goose? That was quick. She was waiting at the palace gate. She had heard Mother Goose was here. Priscilla, it's so good to see you. Oh, oh we missed you. Well, Mother Goose, what do you have to say for yourself? Priscilla, I've been a very foolish woman. How can I ever make it up to you? I was selfish and thoughtless. I let my vanity rule my head instead of my love for you rule my heart. You're my best friend and I want you to come home. Please forgive me. I'll never do anything like this again. Well, Priscilla, what do you... Hang on a minute. Let the listeners get the full impact. I think the editor of Eckington Magazine has tuned in. I might get a good write-up. Now, where was I? <clears throat> Please forgive me, Priscilla. I beg you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> Finished. Almost, your majestical. Priscilla, please come home, dear friend. What is your answer, Priscilla? She says she will. Oh, oh wonderful. Oh. Sorry to break up this little part, but I've just come to collect my property. Don't you just leave Priscilla alone? She doesn't belong to you. That's where you're wrong. Mother Goose made a deal that's magically binding. The Goose is my slave. How dare you enter my palace or even step foot in Gandalan after breaking a magical law so blatantly? What are you talking about? You have taken a being from another enchanted land and made them your slave. You must be punished for your actions. You will be arrested and made to stand trial. If you are found guilty, you will get life imprisonment. Whatever. I can use my powers and disappear at the click of my fingers. Ha! Your powers won't work here. Only good magic works in Ganderland. Guards! Seize him! Oh, no, please, I beg you, don't put me away. I can't go to prison. I'm claustrophobic. Not life behind bars. Please, I'll do anything. It's too late. Take him away. No, wait. I've got an idea. King Goosequill, you have the power to take away his magic. What if he agrees to relinquish his magic in exchange for his freedom? What a good idea. Malignum, do you agree? Yes, yes, I'll do it. I agree. Anything. Please don't send me to prison for life. Well, it looks like the Demon King has lost his crown. <laughs> <Hooray>! <laughs> Come on, everyone. we better get back to Uphill Struggle, or we won't be ready for the Mayfair tomorrow. Now then, Bert. Hello, Malcolm. What's happened to you? You've got two black eyes. Did your wife clobber you? No, I haven't seen her. She's thrown me out. This happened in church. In church? Yeah. Yesterday, I went to the morning service, and when we got home to sing the first hymn, I noticed Miss Prim was in front of me, and she had her dress caught up in the cheeks of her bottom. 
Oh dear, most awkward. Exactly. I didn't want her to feel embarrassed, so before anyone could notice, I leaned over and pulled it out for her. Well, quick as lightning, she turned round and belted me right in the eye. Well, I never, and you were only trying to do a good deed. So how did you get the other one? A bit later, we stood up for the second hymn, and I saw it had happened again. But I'd learnt my lesson and left it where it was. However, just as we started singing, Mavis Doily, who was stood next to me, spotted it and pulled it out. Well, I was horrified. I didn't want her getting a black eye as well as me, so I quickly leaned over and stuffed it back in again. Come on, Malcolm, let me buy you a drink. You look like you could do with one. Morning, Squire Skinflint. Good morning, chaps. See you at the Mayfair this afternoon? Good morning, Squire Skinflint. Ah, Mrs Goose, I was just looking for you. Oh, yes. What can I do for you? I wanted to have a word. As long as it doesn't take long, dear, I've got lots to sort out for the Mayfair. Well, I was wondering if you care to be my partner tonight at the Celebration Barn Dance. Squire Skinflint, are you asking me out on a date? Yes, I am. And please, call me Clarence. You want to go out with me, looking like this, Clarence? Uh, looking like what? Well, I'm back to normal. I lost my youth and beauty when I got Priscilla back. Really? I haven't noticed. Oh, you charmer. When you flew off to Ganderland, so determined to find your friend, I realised how lovely and sweet and kind you were. Oh, Clarence. I also realised what a fool I'd been. So superficial, not looking at the person within. I am so flattered, Clarence. But I'm afraid the answer is no. I've decided I don't need a man. I'm happy with who I am. And I'm happy being single. So, if you don't mind, could we just be friends? For now. Yeah, of course. But please still come with me to the barn dance as a friend. Well, I will if you don't make a fuss about Marigold and Colin dancing with each other. After all, she is his girlfriend. What? Surely you've seen the way they look at each other. I've no idea. Why don't you go and find your son and tell him how happy you are for him? <laughs> yes. I think I will. Uh, see you later. Hello, Tulip. What's up with you? Colin and Marigold are going to the dance tonight together. Well, of course they are. They're dating each other. Don't remind me! Oh, dear. Have you got a little bit of a crush on Colin? It's not a crush. It's the real thing. <sighs> but your sister loves him. Don't you want her to be happy? Yes. But I can't help how I feel. How do you feel? Russian! Look, there's plenty more fish in the sea. What about Lord Malignum? He's turned over a new leaf now. Or you could take my advice and stay single like me. Think of all the fun we could have. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Who needs a bloke to be happy? Not me. Come on, let's go and put the kettle on. I've got a better idea. Let's open the Prosecco. You're on. Our pantomime is over. Good has triumphed, you'll agree. By cunning plots defeated. I guess the joke's on me. And now it seems our tale is done. <laughs> the moral is quite clear. Don't be something that you're not, or else you'll shed a tear. Remember to always be yourself. That's the message of our show. And now we fear it's really time for all of us to go. Throughout our big adventure, we hope we've made you smile. And if we have, we'd like to say it really was worthwhile. Time has come to wish you well and bid you all good night. Good luck, good health and happiness. Stay well and all sleep tight. Mother Goose was written by Kai Bailey and featured in order of appearance. Amy Ash as Marigold, Aaron Pettican as Colin, Joe Warwick as Fairy Collie Wobbles, Laura Griffin as Tulip, Kai Bailey as Mother Goose, Stuart Weil as Lord Malignum, 
Hannah Priestley as the spirit of the pool, Sue Fletcher as Mrs Chutney, Mel Priestley as Hilda Bunting, Callum Thomas as Malcolm Powder, Kelly Anderson as Mavis Doyley, Callum Thursby as Bert Toast, Jackie Taylor Johnson as Miss Proper, Colette Buchanan Gray as Miss Prim, Godfrey Barlow as Squire Skinflint, Matthew Brown as Professor Whimsy, Tamara Mills as Goose Pimple, and Keith Bagley as King Goose Quill. The programme was recorded and edited by Callum Thursby and directed by Kai Bailey and Joe Warwick. It was a Heckington Players production for Heckington Living Community Radio. Thank you.